I'm Dr. Alan Titus, paleontologist for the Bureau of Land Management, Korea River District. And today, I'd like to talk to you about fossils. But first, we have to ask ourselves, how do we know about things like T-Rex or Triceratops or even giant megalodon sharks and flying reptiles like Pteranodon? Well, the answer to that question is through fossils. So what is a fossil? Well, a fossil is any evidence, any trace of any life form that lived in the past. It's that easy. A fossil is just evidence of something that lived a long time ago. Now, generally, we define that as more than 10,000 years ago. If it's just less than 10,000 years old, a dead body of something, then we call it recent remains. But if it's older than 10,000 years and it's evidence of life, it's a fossil. Now, fossils actually come in two main types. You may not think about it, but an organism or a life form has everything that makes itself up, its body. And so any trace or part or piece of that animal that was in its body is called a body fossil. Now that could be uh, soft things like skin, tongue, a heart, an eyeball, or it could also include things like teeth and bones and hard shells. These are all kinds of body fossils, things that were actually in the living organism. But we can also have evidence, indirect evidence, of an animal's existence through the effects that it has on its environment. So if an animal nibbles on a piece of food, for instance, or if it walks through mud and leaves footprints, those aren't actually parts of the animal's body, but they're evidence of that animal's existence. They're actually fossil behavior. They're evidence of what that animal did on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it was burrowing through sand or feeding on something or making a home for itself. And we call these indirect evidences, things that aren't actually parts of the animal's body, a trace fossil. So we have body fossils and trace fossils, okay? Now, body fossils and trace fossils both usually occur in sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are those rocks that form at the Earth's surface under the normal conditions of the Earth's surface. So places like rivers, lakes, swamps, mountain valleys, deserts, sand dunes, coasts, ocean bottoms. These places are all environments where sand and mud and silt and other debris can pile up over time and form blankets that later become sedimentary rocks. And as these blankets of sedimentary rock accumulate, they preserve within them the evidence of all the animals that lived at the time the rocks were forming. This can include both body fossils and trace fossils. Okay, well now let's take a look at some body fossils collected in southern Utah, right around Kanab. Uh, here I have a tooth from a Tyrannosaurus, cousin of the T-Rex. Okay, this came right out of the mouth of the living animal. Of course it died, was buried, became a fossil. But since this was part of the animal when it was alive, it's actually part of the body and therefore a body fossil. Here I have some oyster shells from an ancient seaway bed. These shells encased the living oyster. They're part of its body. Therefore, these seashells as fossils are body fossils. And finally, I've got a piece of petrified wood. 
part of the trunk of the once living tree, part of the tree's body. So therefore, this wood, even though it's of a plant, is a body fossil. Okay. Now we can look at some trace fossils, some things that are indirect evidence of an animal. This is the impression, the, I should say the cast, the filling of an impression of a footprint of a dinosaur. When it walked, it left little dents or impressions of its foot in the ground. Later on, sand filled up those impressions, creating what we call a cast. And it's not really part of the animal's body, is it? The animal stepped in the mud and kept moving and is no longer here, but left the evidence that it was here. So even though this footprint molded a part of the animal's body, it's not technically part of its body. Therefore, we would call this a trace fossil. So fossil footprints are traces, trace fossils. This is, believe it or not, fossilized poop. Now, what do you think? Is poop part of an animal's body? Or is it just something that the animal's body left behind? Well, the answer is the latter. The poop is something the animal left behind. So fossilized poop, or as we scientists call it, coprolite, is actually a trace fossil. Evidence that the animal was alive and, and was in a particular place and maybe even eating certain things, but it's not part of the animal's body. So it's a trace fossil. <laughs>